Hi, I'm Amy Chesery, author and illustrator of The Coloring Book of Shadows, and I recorded this video live on Facebook, so it is raw and unscripted, and I may sound like I'm talking to myself or saying hi to people who aren't there or answering random questions, but hopefully it gives you more insight into the 2021 planner if you are curious to know more. Hi. Hold on just a minute. Pull up my notes. Okay. Cool. So I'm Amy. Share this video with friends. Oh no. Okay. You can share with your friends, but I have to talk. I can't share it with my friends. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Awkward start. I'm Amy Chesery, and this is the new planner for Magical 2021. And I've never done one of these, but I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about it a little more um, ad lib. And Micah is not dead. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you weren't dead, Micah. I could tell. Hi, Christy Louise. So thank you guys for joining. And I just wanted to um, talk about the book a little bit and just kind of maybe I don't know. You can ask questions and I'll just talk about the things. I have some notes um, and then I'll just kind of ad lib it too and just tell you what I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> so I think my favorite thing about it is that it's sort of a collaboration between me and between you. So even if you don't color it and that was one of my first things that I wanted to share is you really don't have to color it. I know it's coloring book of shadows, um, but it actually doesn't have to be colored if you don't want to. And the second point on that in random order is that um, you shouldn't feel pressured to do the whole book. I know it's a lot of art. So sometimes people really do feel pressured to do every page or they feel they're behind, but just do the ones you do and enjoy it. Hi everybody, Julie and Patty. Hi. Thank you guys for coming. This is really cool. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So hopefully I'll be less awkward in a minute here. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so yay. So it's a collaboration, whether or not you color or you just enjoy the spirit of it. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. And it makes it a little easier for you, I think for, for people to get into the zone if there's not a blank page if there's something already there for you to be creative and to start the magic even if you end up taking it your own direction or whatever it's sort of a starting point so that's why I really like doing this oh and just before I go on if you feel afraid to start coloring I have a free class so go to coloringbookofshadows.com and hit courses hi Ted and Amanda hi guys Okay, so go to the free course if you're afraid. So I think the reasons why I think this planner and the format of it works and helps people to connect and kind of stay in the groove, one of it is just because creativity is magic and it's the same thing as magic. It's the same energy and kind of the same process. So um, if it's the same flow and if you're writing or coloring or just imagining or doing the spells, that's all creative magic. So it kind of builds on itself. And art and symbolism is also magic in a deep way to connect uh, to your spirit. So even if you don't color, just looking at art or symbolism can really be transformative and moving and it can kind of take you on a journey. So if you just look through it and read it and don't color anything, you can still do all the magic. <laughs> and um, it's simple. I know some of the art's a little complicated sometimes where there's more art, but I try to keep it to more simple spells, everyday things. <laughs> and um, shorter things that can make a big difference over time. Um, it still goes deep, especially this one. I think each year it gets a little deeper into the topics and the magic and all of that. Oh, can you not hear me? Oh, it's, do I need to talk louder, Pat, Patty? Is it you? You guys tell me if I need to talk louder. I can yell. <laughs> so also it's, 
makes it personal because you can add color and writing and I know you can read about magic all you want and I read plenty about magic but you have to experience it at some point and kind of get to your own thing okay you can hear me cool um yeah so you have to experience it too you can read about it and experience it and write your own stuff and color it to get like your own mood and that's what makes it effective so those are the things why i think um that it helps the book is helpful and why i think it could help make your magic cool and yes so also, um, yes, 2020 was a crappy year. Um, a lot of people still said that the book helped them stay connected and grounded, even when things got crazy. Um, one of the things that I kind of thought about a lot this year was like, you know, magic is about influence, but it doesn't mean that it's not about control. Uh, <laughs> You're not in control and there are things always outside of your control. Um, sometimes really big things like pandemics and, you know, all kinds of stuff, politics and crap. Uh, but uh, magic is about influence. So if you're like a little witchy ship in the ocean and the wind is blowing your little ship, you can still steer it back in the direction, even if you kind of get off course. So, um, cool. So, yeah. So let's see, blah, blah, blah. oh, and the, I have a standard version. Hi, someone just said the Aussies, the Aussies are here. Okay, um, good, because I made a Southern Hemisphere version for you. And that's just like Animal Crossing. I don't know who here plays Animal Crossing, but I do. And um, there's a Southern Hemisphere version for you guys that's out now at the same time. I finally did it at the same time. So that's cool. That's if you're like in Australia or Southern South America. If you're not, that you're in the North. Most people are in the Northern Hemisphere, but there's um, a lot of people in the Southern Hemisphere too. Okay. So I have various versions of the book. Oh, Elizabeth asks if the giveaway is over. Yes, it is. I was going to announce the winners live, but that might distract me too much right now. So hold on, maybe I'll do that. I've already reached out to the winners and I'll send it in an email tomorrow too. Hold on, I need some water. <laughs> it's important to stay hydrated. Okay, so Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere and hardcover. This is my favorite one. It's sturdy and I, I like to lay it. I think it lays flat. The paperback is the least expensive version and it's still really cool. And then the probably, well, probably not the most popular, but people really like the spiral version. And this is last year's, but it just lays really flat. So that's, and you can fold it back. So that's a good version. And then I have the printable PDF, which you can imagine it's right here because I don't have one printed out. Um, and that's, if you want to use markers or watercolors, that's the best one. You can print it on heavy paper and you can print it single-sided. The books are double-sided on the page. So now I'm going to go through the book a little bit. Thanks guys. Thanks for all your nice comments. Let's see. Oh yeah. I think I'll just go through the book. I have some tips and stuff, but I'll do those later. Okay, so I try to mix it up. If you've done the ones in the past, I try to mix it up a little bit or make it something a little bit different in it and build on the themes. I think they each go a little bit. Um, oh, difference between the paper. I'll answer that first. Um, the paperback is called a standard 55 pound paper. So it's not something special and it's really for pencils only because it's double-sided. A marker is going to bleed through. That's why I think the, the PDFs are the best if you want to use markers or paints. Um, so these ones, the paperbacks are 55 pounds. This, the hardcover is a 70 pound paper, so it's a lot thicker. It's actually the thickest one the printer will do. I wish we could do a little bit more, but it's actually pretty hard to get that done. So this is a 70 pound and 
the spiral, not to confuse you, but there's one on Amazon and that's a 70 pound paper. That's the thickest one that I can order. The one on Lulu, which ships international, is a tiny bit thinner. It's a 60 pound, so it's still better than the paperback. So Lulu is more where you order if you're international. Um, I am the only person here, I'm indie published, so it's kind of difficult to do a lot of these things and get it like everywhere in the world in all the same versions, so I do my best. So the spiral is thicker paper, the one on Amazon US, they will ship to most countries in the world. Um, that's gonna be the 70 pound the best. Lulu's almost as good, um, but it's still a nice spiral. So I hope that answers it. I know that's confusing. I wish I had like a clearer answer, but that's just kind of how it is. But the hardcover and the spirals have better paper. And then if you really want to use markers, as I said before, the PDF and some thick paper. Okay, you're not confused. Cool, good. Um, okay, yeah, so the new themes, thanks for asking that. Because I know a lot of people want to know that. It's important. Okay, so the new themes this year are alchemy, which was maybe the most fun for me to research all the old alchemical art and kind of look at it maybe in a little bit of a new light. Um, I added all the runes are in there, uh, in interspersed, which is kind of fun. There's a little bit on moon gardening. Uh, Leonie, it shouldn't be sold out especially the spiral. I'll look, but on Amazon, they, they like just got inventory. So keep, keep an eye out and I'm ordering more too. So, so keep an eye out there. If it's not like readily available, it might just be like a, a glitch there. So oh, moon gardening and then deities, the gods and goddesses, which was like my creative journey for this one. So, okay. I hope this will work to show you without being too weird. Um, yeah, so the spiritual alchemy, that's really about, and there's a page in here, but it's really about kind of breaking down some of your false selves, like who you think you should be and finding like the real core of who you are. So there's some really fun stuff in there and it weaves all the way. Um, yeah, there will definitely be a restock. Um, don't worry about that. I don't, I don't, I personally don't want to sell it. I can keep reordering them. So just hang tight. <laughs> and so, yeah, the alchemy is really cool and it keeps weaving its way kind of through to find like your true self and then uh, take your, take your year from there. And it's, it goes into the Philosopher's Stone, which um, is also a Harry Potter book. But before that, it was like the alchemical journey to the gold within yourself. So that's a really cool, let me just get through the intro. The intro is a little similar if you've seen the books in the past. I've added some alchemical stuff like I've shown you. Um, this page here, that's the philosopher's hand. And uh, I updated a little bit. Uh, the traditional one has a fish in like a lake of flaming sulfur, but it didn't resonate as well with me. Candy Lee, hi. So I changed it to a flaming uh, alchemical rose, which I thought maybe resonated a little bit more. Um, but if it's a fish in sulfur to you, then I don't know, you can draw one next to it. Um, so the intro is a little bit similar. And then if you want to know what I lost slept, slip, if you want to know what I lost sleep over in this book, it was these monthly pages because I loved um, the moon. <laughs> pages last year so much I was like what am I gonna do but anyway I think these came out really cool uh they're like little field guides uh with some notes and books and just some different mini spells and uh correspondences and little energies and things like that that you can do each month so I like to keep it a little different do something you know different a little bit different each year um let's see Okay, and then I thought it might be fun to show. I've shown you some of my sketches and stuff before, but like this, uh, one of the things I work on a bunch is my people drawing skills, also known as figure drawing. I think that's what it's called, figure drawing, figure drawing. Uh, but uh, it 
was something that I always felt nervous about. So anyway, I did like self-hypnosis and like all kinds of practice and just stuff to work on it this year. And it was really, really fun. So that's one of them. And um, I did a lot of sketches and things to get to that place. So you'll see it was like, a, can you see that? It was like a cat with wings, which would have been really cool also. Oh yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, hold on. I'm holding too many books. Let me get a grip here. Yeah, it was like a cat with wings, which would have been really cute, but I ended up doing animals elsewhere. And then I did like a bunch of different versions. I was gonna put it out of different shaped boxes. And then I did like funky, <laughs> little bit, she's so cute. But then the final version, you know, started to come together. So sometimes I nail it on the first sketch or whatever, but with some of, um, with the deities and the people and the uh, like mythical beings, some of them took a little bit of work. Um, this was also a fun, let's see. The bathtub scene was ridiculous. I don't know why it took me so long, but it was a fun one too. This bath scene, it's a, it's a busier page, but I wanted to do like a new, I was really into doing like new perspectives. Like I've done, I've done these sideways bathtubs before, but I wanted to do like something kind of new. So who, I don't, I know there's probably a couple Animal Crossing people here, but at first I did like their Taurus bathtub and then I turned it into a fish, which actually, can you see that? It's actually pretty ridiculous. I didn't pick the fish bathtub, but I don't know, maybe maybe it'll make an appearance at some, at some point. Uh, but I did a lot of those versions. And then some of them came together a little bit better, but uh, quicker. But anyway, I played around with a lot of them. And then, let's see. The deities are maybe my favorite. They came out really well. They were worth it, worth the creative meltdown. Oh, that was something I was going to read you today, but I forgot to prepare it. I was going to read you like <laughs> one of my journal entries where I'm like, how am I going to draw all this? I do that all the time. Oh, I'm sorry, turtle. Hi. This is for those of you just joining. This is the planner for a magical 2021. And if you go to coloringbookofshadows.com, you will find the links. It's available in both Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere for those in the Australia, New Zealand. So, okay. So there's Bridget, the queen of Imbolg. Uh, that was a really fun one. I'll show you my, my crazy, not crazy. She was cute. The first one was really cute, but I wanted her to be a little more sophisticated. And so I did more versions <laughs> and she turned out really cool. She's like, awesome they're both cute though and then this is another thing that didn't quite make it that i really liked so maybe oh thank you for posting a link you guys that's really sweet um a little uh what's that called the anvil with like the, the lady's hands and some of those hammer things that didn't make it <laughs> i picked out a couple of sketches of like things that didn't make it just to show you i don't know why i just thought it would be interesting so maybe next time because i really liked that and I'll just show you a couple more things. The unicorn. I've, I had this weird thing where like I thought horses would be hard, but I, I actually like really enjoy drawing horses. So I did a couple versions of him though. Her, that one's like a little funkier. Still cute though, but that's the final version. What else do we have? Oh, Pan. He's so handsome. <laughs> I drew a couple really handsome dudes. The genie is my favorite. Uh, that was a really cool one to do. Let's see what else. This is a really cool, the field guide for April is really awesome. I like that one a lot. I thought it was kind of awesome. I can kind of imagine how that would be colored. Really ridiculous dragon. Some good ones there. Uh, and then that wasn't even the final version. The dragon took a lot of twists and turns. 
Where is that one? Oh, the skunk. Hold on. I'll show you the dragon, but... The skunk, the alchemical skunk. And for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, I wasn't able to do a lot of changes, but uh, Fiona Horn, the magical, wonderful Fiona Horn, um, look her up if you haven't. She's a famous Australian witch, and she does editing for both this book and the Southern Hemisphere book. But um, she always wants to, she has the best ideas for all these different Southern Hemisphere plants and animals. And um, I didn't get to add any of them other than one this year and it's this I turned it into something called a numbat so look up the numbat it's really really cool anyway yeah the dra oh the dragon's really cool so hold on I'll show you the dragon oh Freya <laughs> she's really cute she turned out cute in her little cats I like that one there's one of the runes they're kind of interspersed some people correspond them to like the wheel of the year and they're sort of in there in the, the time of the year. Um, uh, uh. And then, oh, Stonehenge, that was really fun. Like a little landscape. So kind of, kind of a simple thing to color, but that'll be really cool to see how you guys color that one. And then, oh, June has some of my favorite stuff. The Egyptian deities, Kacha. Uh, I loved doing these, like, the animal heads was, like, so fun. Here's one that didn't make it. It's Seshat. She's, like, the Egyptian goddess of writing and books and math and knowledge and stuff like that. And a cat was going to be playing with her little scroll. <laughs> so maybe she'll be there in the future. <laughs> but she was cute. Here's the rough draft of Lug. He looks more like a Game of Thrones character. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but he turned out really cute. I'll show you him in a minute. What else? What else? Oh, in the alchemy, the stages of, the basic stages of alchemy, um, a lot of the old art had these potion bottles that represented each stage. So I sort of did like a new version of it that goes through each one. And that's the fermentation. Am I holding that up? Sorry if I'm a little spazzy. There's a little, another bast. Yeah, that's cool. What else? My favorite genie. So cute. <laughs> oh, the selkies. That was really fun too. <clears throat> uh, yes. Okay, what else? What else? Oh, I wanted to show you Luke. Yeah. Here's the final version. A lot of the, the working with the deities was kind of cool because like you really feel, first off, I think they love to be depicted in art because that's how they live on. So they, you know, the ones that want to be drawn, like really come forward. And I think they all had some really, really, really sweet, sweet energies to it. And he, Luke came out way younger in the second version. I don't know. I mean, that's cute, you know. I'll do him as an old man version again, but I don't know. That's how he, he ended up wanting to be younger and more playful. <laughs> so that was cute. Yeah, I'm very excited to see how everyone colors this. Benu, the Egyptian bird of rebirth, Horus, a bunch more new characters. Not, not new, but new to my art. Uh, this one came out really cool. The September, getting into all the autumn type stuff. It's always really fun. Oh, this was one when I was going through my notes, I was bummed because like somehow these didn't make it in. I don't know what happened. Maybe one of them, but I'm going to need to add some more barn owls to something. Okay. What else? Ganesha is really cool. And there's a full preview video. I'm just gonna, I'm just showing you some of my favorites, but there is um, on, if you go to coloringbookofshadows.com and look for this, <laughs> um, there's a full preview video where I show you like every single page. So if you wanna see every single page, there are like a hundred and, 
over 180 pages. So uh, you can check out the full preview there. Ganesha, I thought of you. Candy Lee, if you're still watching, <laughs> I thought of you. Uh, the September one, yeah, they're cool. Oh, and then Morgan. <laughs> I love Morgan and she was not happy. Let me just tell you, she was not happy with her first get. <laughs> that was the point where I was almost like, she was just like, look, are you serious? Do you really want to do this or not? Cause you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to up your game. And that's, uh, you know, I just started, well, I did, I did do self hypnosis, which is really, really fun. And I just imagined myself like, because I, you know, I always felt, even from when I was a real small kid, I felt the fear around drawing people. So I wanted to, uh, you know, I'm over 40 and I wanted to like get over that and draw them because I've been wanting to, to do that, you know. So uh, I did self-hypnosis and just tons of practice. What was that book I was going to show you? Anyway, it's a book on drawing fairies that was really fun. I don't know where I put it. But anyway, Morgan... Thank you. She came out awesome. She's wielding this battle axe and a bird. And that was really fun. Uh, yeah, so I did the self hip. Oh, did I finish my thought there? I'm not sure I did. But I just, when I did self hypnosis, it was like imagining myself really enjoying it and just like doing page after page of all these cool, you know, figure drawings and, you know, being like, oh yeah, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, it only took about, I guess I practiced a lot, but really it seemed to come together really quick. Like two weeks after I started doing that, um, I just started nailing them a little bit better and really liking their expressions. Mostly it was that I wanted them to have like a lot of expression. You're the other way. You're scared to draw animals. Yeah. That's where the thing was like, I didn't have a problem drawing animals, but, and that's why I kind of realized it was all it was a little bit just in my head, like my own fear getting in my way of that. So um, it was, it was, that was fun. It was a cool journey. It felt worth it. And it was fun to watch myself progress. So this is the October field guide. I love that one. I can't wait to color it. Do, do, do. The Philosopher's Stone. I have some sketches I should show you. That was weird because the Philosopher's Stone like doesn't have a look. <laughs> like it's one of those things that you're not supposed to, it's not supposed to have a shape. But I mean, it does, but it doesn't. It's like different to everyone. It's kind of your own interpretation. So it was interesting to draw it. But I think it came out cool. What else have we got here? Persephone, she also did not like her initial drawing. So I fixed that up and this was kind of a cool scene, a little bit different, but it's like a haunted attic or like a, maybe not haunted, but just like an attic full of secrets. So that was sort of a thing I did. Oh, Hecate. Hecate didn't want to be drawn in form. She wanted like a book about summoning and working or a page about it. She wanted to be in there, but not drawn. So that was cool. Oh, and all the mandrakes. That's what I wanted to show you. So I wanted to do one, but then I ended up picking three because they're all so cute. It's all the mandrakes. And then I did like a ton of them. I just kind of wanted them to be a little different. Like they have crystal bundles and like just funny little dudes. So that was cool. And what else? I think that's about it. I mean, there's more, there's tons of more, but there's really cool spells, all new spells. If you've done the ones in the past, I do them, I do new ones. So I try to keep it really different. Um, each year. I mean, they're all, maybe they're similar wheel of the year themes or seasonal themes, but I try to do like the spell work different just to keep it, you know, unique and uh, spice it up for you. Yeah, the Mandrix are cool. And there's the Holly and the Oak Kings. I thought they were kind of hot too. It was fun to draw the men. I hadn't drawn a lot of, I mean, 
hadn't drawn a lot of characters in general, but I hadn't drawn a lot of men especially. Yay! And then the Ouroboros. I'm totally Ouribros. The Ouribros. I think that's how you say it. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Wendy, I saw you on there. I think it's Ouribros. But it's the alchemical symbol that the end is the beginning. So it just starts over again if all the cycles of life, of the seasons, and of yourself, and your journey. So it's, that's, that's kind of a bit about the book. So it's all kind of designed to be a journey that takes you through transformation and just fun at the same time. Um, so top 10 tips. Use colored pencils unless you have the PDF and start simple. You can take my free class don't go for protection. No, that's not what it says. <laughs> Don't go for perfection. You should use protection. Um, let your creativity grow. So don't, don't be worried if you're not like super good or you don't like what you're, uh, don't judge, just express, let yourself play on the page. And my free course is good for that if you're afraid to start. Um, yeah, practice. You can try color schemes that you see from other places, like other pieces of art that you see. Um, maybe pick just a couple colored pencils and see what you can do. Don't judge or think about what other people will think about your art, good or bad. Just enjoy it as it comes. Um, you don't have to color at all. Again, I think I've said that. Hi. Uh, yeah, you don't have to color the whole book or feel pressured. I know a lot of people feel like they're behind or they wasted it or whatever, but just color what you can get done and then you can enjoy it in black and white too. Um, you don't have to color at all and use neutrals. <laughs> you don't have to use neutrals, but you can use neutrals like gray or brown or tan. Okay, so I don't know if that's 10, that might be 10. Uh, and then my other thing was what to write if you have no plans. So like me, I'm really introverted. So, and I have a, you know, kind of work for myself. So I don't usually have a lot of plans. Um, some people told me that their planners didn't have a lot of things because their plans got canceled in 2020, which I totally get because a lot of stuff got canceled. Um, and there's, it's definitely true, but there's lots of things you can write and reflect on even if you don't have plans. So first off, there is astrological info on the calendar pages and, and the intro has stuff, like the introduction has charts about how to use it and information on how to use it. So the first thing you can write is you can reflect each day on the astrological influences and if you feel them or what it means for you or what, yeah, birthdays, oh, gratitude journal. Yeah, you guys have awesome ideas. Uh, call them out. So yeah, so you can uh, reflect on the astrological influences or write your personal astrology, um, daily gratitude, daily tarot or oracle. You can do synchronicities and intuition or a dream journal, a record of your magical practice, magical thoughts and happenings. You can do mundane stuff. You do research. Other, yeah, other posts or book quotes. It's a really good idea how you're feeling, mm -hmm. your mood. You can put what the weather was like. <laughs> or a dream journal, I think I already said that. Uh, daily intentions and thoughts. What made you laugh and cry. Uh, whatever is most important to you on that day or what matters in your life. So those are ideas of what you can write. Some of them are in the intro, but... Um, Oh yeah, The Artist's Way, the very cool book. Yeah, great ideas, everybody, seriously, that's awesome. Um, everyone is so creative and crafty. Okay, so I already went through the book. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, the full preview is on the website and I really made it to inspire you, you can jump in at any time of the year or pop back, back in and out. But I really made it to be like every day or simple like monthly things you can do to just stay 
connected and do some planning also. There are calendars. Did I show you any of the calendars yet? <laughs> That's important. There are calendars for each month. This one has a tasty mushroom pie with some ram's horn candles. Yeah, calendars for each month and then all the obvious stuff that I should be talking about. It has this weekly page for each weekly planner page. It has the moon phase. It has the moon sign. It has the sun signs. It has the retrogrades. It has the sabbats. Uh, so it has all your, some, not all of it, but it has a lot of stuff. Hi, Christy. Okay, see you, bye. Um, yeah, so so it has calendars too, as well as, as, well as spell casting tips and magic and art. Yes, yes. So all the versions are up now and I will send an email out tomorrow uh, with the contest winners and I hope you like it. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions now? Because if not, I probably won't just keep talking. <laughs> Even though this has been really fun. Okay, good. If you have any other questions, you can always ask me or post them in the group or whatever. So make sure to join the Coloring Coven and on Facebook. And you can find the links to buy this at coloringbookofshadows.com. Awesome. So I know it's night for most of you. So have an awesome night and a happy full moon. I hope you go and do something fabulous. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.